with the fun segment, Internet Coach. So we had someone write in. They're going to talk about what their goals are, uh, what, what they're sort of aiming for here, their training, and then uh, Gordon and I will do our best using our immense expertise in the area of road racing and track and field and cross country to help them out. So let's see who is going to be the first person we help out here. Colt, can we throw up the info? Okay. So this person's goal. Wow. Okay. We got a serious one for the first installment. They want to qualify for the U S trials in the marathon Two seventeen fifty nine. They are targeting the Stockholm marathon on June the 4th. So that's coming up pretty soon. They've run 222 and 6645 before. So they're trying to drop four minutes from their last or from their best mark um, at the Stockholm Marathon to qualify for the U.S. trials. Okay. What do you think, Gordon? So are they asking like race strategy for that Stockholm Marathon or build up strategy for Stockholm Marathon? Well, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get more info. I just say, like, what do you think so far? Like how qualified do you feel you are to help somebody oh, qualify for the trials? Extremely. I'm okay. undefeated in getting athletes qualified for the trials. Never lost. I've, so. I've been to two of them on the marathon side of things. Like, you've been so, there. Yeah. I've been around it. So I've been able to just kind of absorb all that. And what else do we know, Colt? Do we have any other info? Monday. Uh, okay, we could. Okay. So 60 easy, 45 easy afternoon interval workout. Wednesday, 90 minute long run. I do this at a faster end of my recovery pace, which is 550 to 610. Thursday, 60 p.m. They go 60 again. So they double on Monday and Thursday. Friday, you shake out. Saturday, wait, are they racing every Saturday? Wow. 10K to half marathon and then Sunday. 120 to 150 long run, 550 to 630, depending on how gassed my legs are after the race. I don't think he's running every week. I don't think he's racing every week. And I think he just, on a race week, that's what I do. It's yeah. Because so I was going to say, my first feedback would be like, yeah, my first feedback would be race less, which goes I against think, I don't my think advice he's for every, every, week. every pro 52, out there. He does 52 races a year. It's just like, is this, maybe this is Yuki Kauchi right again. <laughs> Week 34, race, race yeah. blog, number 34. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other info, Cole, or is that it? All right. We have two questions from the, uh, the runner here, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, first question, race strategy is to run under 68.40 through half, and hopefully that's easy enough to run an even split. Is this a good race strategy? Would you do it differently? Two, I don't like a long taper. The more volume I do, the better I feel. If I fail in Stockholm, what should I do differently in my next build for one of the flatter fall races like Frankfurt or Amsterdam? Okay, so let's talk about strategy first. And then we'll talk about what happens if he doesn't get it. So 218 is the goal. What would you go out at, Gordon? I got, I got, sorry, I need to do some quick mental math. 218. Well, he's saying sixty. He's saying sixty-eight. Well, put that last slide up again. Well, you're saying sixty-eight forty, right? On that last one. Okay, so he's going out he's twenty to... second, twenty seconds faster than the the pace, and then hold right. on to try to run forty seconds yeah. slower in the second half. Yeah, that seems good, right? That seems within reason. I mean, j depending on the course, has he mapped out the course? Because if it's less challenging on the back half. And more challenging on the front half, you could change it, change the order up a bit. But that seems reasonable, right? Yeah, I would argue my only thing I'd wish I knew, the only stat I wish I knew was his like last two or three marathons. How did he, what was his breakdown? What was his first half and second half? Yeah. And so I know how he trends. Because some people, they like, they, they just handle the marathon differently, the first half or second half. Yeah. And I want to know if he just... What's his normal baseline of splitting in a marathon? Yeah. And I would use that as a reference to what to change. But, you know, I think, yeah, 68.40 is good. Hell, I would even say 68.30. Like, give yourself some. Go for it. Go for it. Like, 
that's your whole point of this. Like, you don't want to have any. He's just like, and if you go for it and you don't make it, like, that's okay. Like, because you're not trying mm-hmm. to PR. You're trying to run sub 218. Yeah. Right. You're not trying well, to run 220, yeah. 221, 219. Like, the 218.05 is just, it's the same as running 230 in your book because there's one goal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's no point so are you, in trying to like. Are you saying if he's off pace to, to bag it, to go for it, and if you're not not on, just call it a day? Is our first bit of advice here on the internet coach to potentially <laughs> drop out? I would only say, no, I think there's there's definitely things you can learn from running. I do think if he gets close to the deadline and you start doing that, you, if you know you're not going to yeah. do it, you need to start you know, scratching race, not scratching mid race. When you get closer to the deadline, now we're still far away from the deadline. You should still run the full thing and get it, turn it into okay, a good so, workout or whatever. Yeah. So let's put up the second part of that question. Cause he talks about how he doesn't like to do a long taper. He likes to stay high volume. Um, if he doesn't get it in Stockholm, first of all, if I fail in Stockholm, no, dude, you got to have that winning mentality here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so series of one, man. Say, Marathons of one. Series of, yeah. This is it. Go into this as if it's the last race you ever run. But yeah. say, say there's a weather cancellation or some other act of, of God. Put it, put the question up again. Well, uh, what should I do differently in my next build for one of the flatter fall races, flatter fall races like Frankfurt or Amsterdam? So the flatter will help, obviously. So if, by chance, there's some sort of issue that goes wrong and he doesn't get it in Stockholm, which, again, I think it's very low. I think he's going to get it because he's gone to the right source for information here. Here's one thing I would say. Move to Flagstaff if you don't get it. That's my advice. Move to Flagstaff. Is that, is that, and is that, knock on Mike Smith's door and ask him for help. Well, just, no, just, just live at altitude. I don't know where this person is training, what the conditions are like. Have they done altitude training before? I might need to do some follow-ups here. But can we get to altitude before the next series of marathons? And I would say this. He says he hates – Yeah, time to too. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, time. So time. Over a year, year yeah. over multiple years. Yeah. He says uh, he hates to, to taper. That's all mental, bro. You're convincing yourself that you're, it's not good for you. You're just addicted Ooh. to the – the feeling of needing to do volume, like you're wrong. Tapering Ooh. is good. You, your brain is telling you like, no, I need to keep going because if I run less, I'm getting weaker. That's not true. Like resting is like one of the hardest, like it's like the angel and devil on your shoulder because yeah, you're yeah, constantly yeah. convincing yourself that the more you run, the better you're getting. And you feel like rest is weakness. Rest is not weakness. What Rest is it's strength. So uh, I will tell you, get out of your own head. Tapering is okay. You think it's bad for you. And because you think it's bad for you, you go race and then you run bad and you blame it on the taper. It's like, no, that was, yeah. that was your brain telling you that you're not prepared, yep. even though your body was. You're, you're, you're letting your brain control how your body feels. So taper, man, it's good for you. Rest is good. You don't want to overtrain. So I got to say that. And then as for, should you run Frankfurt or, Mar- or Amsterdam? Mm-hmm. You gotta go to Amsterdam, man. I would rather spend a weekend in Amsterdam than Frankfurt, right? <laughs> the well, Frank- I don't want depends. German sausages and German beer for well, Amsterdam, just, though. Amsterdam I, nightlife—that's th- gotta be fun. You gotta go to Amsterdam. I think the food. I think the food is gonna be good, and and the the drinks are gonna be plentiful wherever you go. Yeah, I I think your taper advice is interesting. Now you've never run. 222 or 218 in a marathon, but you've been tapering yes. for what the last eight, nine years. <laughs> so you do know something about tapering. No, I, I, that is, I think you've, I true. think you're honest. I mean, there's obviously some people do like take it too far and it's like their, their legs do feel funny, but I think you're right. Like it's almost like when people say, I got too much sleep last night. Like that can't. <laughs> Like, I got 10 hours. I should have gotten eight. It's like, is that it? Like, I feel like you do better with 10. You just got to know how to handle it. Yeah. And you just got to, you know, do do all the the hard. Yeah, know how to handle the taper because I feel like. 
I feel like rest is good. Um, and there's something like therapeutic. Uh, there's something therapeutic about when you get into actively running hours and hours throughout a week. And then when you take that away from you, it's like, yeah, you don't yeah. have coffee all of a sudden. You're like, you feel like yeah. I need my coffee. Like running becomes your coffee. Yeah. And so you don't know how to handle it. And you think it, then you naturally just your body kind of, your brain tells your body to like react differently. But if you but, try to, you need to replace those hours of running with something that will like occupy that exercise brain, but without yeah, actually but, exercising. But if it gives you peace of mind, because mind and body are connected here. If it does give you a peace of mind to do that one last interval session, you, that's a trade off too. Cause I was, this is how I was not with marathon, but with regular, like I would do the traditional two week out from the big meat taper. And sometimes I would talk myself into, I just don't, I feel sluggish. I don't feel sharp, but I stuck with it. Cause I knew like physiologically, that's the best way to do it. I think if I could go back in time, at least one time I would have just tried to do a little bit less just so I had the mental sharpness going in. So maybe he's figured something. But then again, I was a teenager, right? So I, I, was, I was approaching it from a, a different perspective. I think knowing how to use um, those last few weeks of training are going to be important. But it's a marathon, right? All that work's already done. Exactly. Whether you do 14, 14 miles a couple weeks out or 18, I don't think is the difference. Especially once you've already moved to Flagstaff, hired a lead Kipchoge as a coach. And uh, that's going to be our suggestion at the end of the day. Every move every, the flag staff, work with Kipchoge and we're, you're or Boulder. Boulder. You Boulder. choose. It's that's, that's too far. Uh, you know, thanks for the advice. I know going from 222 to 217 is a big jump, but I've got a better chance than you dunking. Oh, oh, ouch. You know ouch, what? Ouch. True. If that's true, then that's great because I'm going to dunk in December. Yeah. So that means if I dunk, you're going to run 217. So yeah, this is actually a good thing. If you think this, you have a better shot than me dunking, I'm like hundred percent confident I'm going to dunk. So therefore I'm now 150% 50 chance. You're going to run 217. Colt, any advice? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I, I've never run a marathon. I know neither is Gordon. You're and I've run one poorly. You're about as qualified as we are. That's why I figured your uh, advice would be worth it. Stay hydrated, you know. There you go. It's good. Drink water. That's great advice. Great advice from Colt. Stay hydrated. This is going to transform though. People are going to start writing in about not race, but just like other stuff too. And then eventually, we're going to get one question from a person who's going to be trying improv for the first time. And Colt, oh it's no! Gonna be your moment. <laughs> it's going to be your moment to come. I'll on be ready. I'll be ready. I'll be ready. And guide them. And you're going to be really helpful at that point. All right. That was fun.